By now, the footballing world, and even those outside of it, have heard about the season's historic promotion race in the National League between Wrexham and Notts County. But I'm not here to talk about Wrexham. Nope. Their story is being told by far more qualified people than I could ever possibly hope to be at this time. However, I do want to talk about the one team whose own historic mark in this National League season deserves its proper recognition. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Knotts County and how they are the undeniable heroes of this 2022-23 season. If we're going by layman's terms, the word undeniable defines something that is plainly true, unquestionably excellent or genuine. It's a word that describes the magpies to a T. When it comes to history in the beautiful game, Knotts County is one of its godfathers. Founded on November 25th, 1862, they are the oldest professional association football club in the world, predating the football association itself. In its 160-year history, the club has experienced the sheer bliss of winning silverware across the various tiers of the English football pyramid. Legendary player and manager Jimmy Cyril led Nuts County from the depths of the old 4th division to the top tier in the late 70s to early 80s, and they've also won an FA Cup in the 1893-94 season, with Notts County being the first team ever outside of the top level of English football to win the trophy. These accomplishments might not be multiple Champions Leagues or dominating an entire league because you have a Norwegian cyborg plowing through teams with no regard for the carnage he leaves behind them, but it is proof that the Magpies are a resilient bunch who have carved their own rightful niche in the history of football. Undeniable, if you will. Although on the other side of that coin, Notts County is also a club that has seen its fair share of hard times to go with all of the good. Whether it was the horrors of Meadow Lane and the Nottingham region as a whole being hit by enemy bombings during the height of World War II, being relegated in the 91-92 season just weeks prior to the Premier League's arrival along with its riches, the club being nearly dissolved in 2003 due to crippling debt from their struggles since relegation from the top flight a decade prior, the fraudulent Monto Finance takeover in 2009 that led to nothing but fool's gold plus a whole lot of confusion, and eventually, the years under Alan Hardy's stewardship, or lack thereof, <laughs> that saw the club being relegated to the National League after a 157-year stint within the English Football League in 2019. Look, a few sentences do not do the history and heritage of this club justice by any stretch. But even with its arrival in the National League and the daunting task ahead of them, there was a ray of hope. After suffering through the buffoonery of Alan Hardy's time as owner, the club was sold in the summer of 2019 to a Danish consortium headed by businessmen Alexander and Christopher Reitz. It marked the beginning of a new chapter in Notts County's history and the dawn of their rise to become the undeniable heroes of this season of football. The Reitz brothers, who are the brains behind a statistical football analysis company known as Football Raider, immediately went to work by ensuring that Notts County staff was finally paid their overdue wages within three days of their takeover. As the club's debts were cleared and a steady hand was now in control of the finances, the team was then able to focus on the monumental task ahead of them, escaping the National League, one of the toughest leagues in the world from which to earn promotion. With only one automatic promotion spot, Nuts County's past three seasons saw them among the seven best teams in the National League, but it was in the aftermath of the 2021-22 season where the tides began to change. Former manager Ian Birchnall left the club to take a job with then League One's Forest Green Rovers, and that opened the doors for the eventual hire of one of the leading men in this story, Luke Williams. No, not that Luke Williams. Not this one either. There we go. Williams' previous coaching experience has been head coaching stints at Swindon Town and for Bristol City's under-23s prior to his most recent stints as an assistant coach at MK Dons and Swansea City. 
His hire was lauded as one in which his experience with coaching at various levels of the EFL pyramid would be the extra push that the Magpies would need in order to achieve the club's goal of promotion. It would not be an easy process, with players such as defender Alex Lacey, winger Callum Roberts, and striker Kaya Wooten leaving the club. At the National League level, it's often a league in which you don't have a lot of money to spend, and thus, signings have to be carefully considered. I guess this is where having an ownership made up of folks whose company specializes in predicting the outcome of matches and competitions via data might give you an edge or two. But in all seriousness, signings such as defenders Aiden Baldwin, midfielder Sam Austin, and forward Cadwin Scott would go a ways towards strengthening the club for its upcoming season, along with maintaining key contributors from previous campaigns such as Richard Brindley, Adam Chickson, Matt Palmer, and Ruben Rodriguez. However, it was the signing of Macaulay Langstaff from Gateshead that made some headlines, as his 32 goals in all competitions aided Gateshead last season in their championship-winning campaign and promotion from the National League North. Impressive. Very nice. Langstaff immediately established himself at his new club with a brace in a 3-0 win against Maidenhead United in Notts County's first game of the season. The Magpies went on a tear going undefeated for 8 straight games with 5 wins and 3 draws before their first loss of the year against Dorking Wanderers on September 17th. This would be the only loss they'd have in the National League until February 25th against Dagenham and Redbridge. 21 straight games undefeated with 16 wins in 5 draws and not to mention completely going full scorched earth on the National League defenses during that streak and in its aftermath as well. Bringing in reinforcements during the January window such as Loney's Jody Jones from Oxford United and midfielder John Bostock only helped keep this historical run going through the remainder of the season. In fact, a goalless draw against Yovo Town in November is the only game in all competitions in which Notts County would not score a goal. But how exactly have they gotten these sort of results? Well, a 3-4-2-1 or a 3-4-1-2 formation with center backs that are comfortable moving the ball, the flexibility to move around the strikers and attacking midfielders, wing backs that can become wingers at a moment's notice, high pressing, and controlling possession at any given opportunity. How much possession do you ask? Well, they averaged over 69% possession per 90 minutes in the National League this season. Nice. Also, having a newly bought striker who saw what a certain Englishman did in 2011-12 with Fleetwood Town at this level, and went, right, let's do that, but better. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm better, I am better! Notts County would eventually finish the season with 32 wins, 11 draws, and 3 losses, with 117 goals scored a league record in 36 goals more than what they had scored in last season's campaign. Macaulay Langstaff would score 41 of those goals, breaking a 92-year-old club record set by Tom Keatley and also breaking Ricky Miller's National League season record with Dover Athletic from the 2016-17 season. The team itself would be one that exceeded the 105-point record set by Crawley Town in the 2010-11 season as well with 107 points in total. Unfortunately, this year happened to be historic for more than just one club in the National League, as Wrexham also exceeded the 105 point record, and in fact, they established a new record at 111 points, a record setting season by the Red Dragons that did come at Knox County's expense in their rematch at the racecourse on April 10th. And you're taking a f piss now! You're taking a f piss now! It was a 3-2 loss for the Magpies that saw Wrexham goalkeeper Ben Foster make a heroic last-minute save on Cadwan Scott's penalty kick attempt and put Wrexham ahead of Notts County in the standings. Eventually, a pair of draws too many ended up being the deciding factor in the title race and for the fourth straight year, Notts County was headed to the Vanarama National League playoffs to decide the second promotion berth to the EFL. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. A historic season whose story was at risk to be shuffled to the side and be made into a footnote after falling short of the mark of capturing the National League Championship and the automatic promotion berth. 
because if there's one thing that Knott's County has known throughout its recent history, it's the brutal, agonizing nature of the National League playoffs. Since their arrival in the National League after their relegation in the 2018-19 season, the Magpies have fallen short in all of their playoff promotion attempts, as Harrogate Town defeated them in the playoff final at Wembley Stadium in 2020, then Torquay United and Grimsby Town took them the extra time in 2021 and 2022 respectively to crush their promotion hopes. The 2023 playoffs would not be any easier. While Notts County's second place finish had guaranteed the team a semi-final berth, their eventual opponent in Boreham Wood was one of the two teams, the other being Bromley, in which the Magpies had not won against all season, with both games between the clubs being draws. Notts County would play hosts for the third matchup at Meadow Lane, and there would be no draws this time around. There can be only one. While Notts County had some early chances in the game to score, it was Notts' high line that came back to bite him as Borum capitalized on the long ball and Femi Ilasami capitalized on a cross to make it 1-0 for the wood. Things only went from bad to worse after an errant pass from John Bostock to Aiden Baldwin that was stolen by Lee and Lovu who took it down the pitch and scored to make it 2-0 on stoppage time on the first half. A slow start that could have very well caused history to repeat itself. However, this wasn't anything like the team of previous seasons. It's not over! Not yet! It didn't take long once the second half began for Aiden Baldwin to make up for the intercepted ball from stoppage time and score an absolute pile driver from outside the box to make it 2-1 and bring Meadow Lane right back into this game to woe the lads on towards evening up the score. Nuts County thought they had the equalizer with a penalty kick at the 63rd minute, but Rodriguez's attempt at the bottom left corner was saved by Joe McDonald, keeping the score at 2-1. Chances came and went for both teams, but even with a majority of the possession, Bournemouth had parked the bus and they were not letting anything from Knott's County through. That was, at least until the 96th minute where Jody Jones, who'd come in earlier in the half for Adam Chickson, crossed the ball into the box, finding the head of Aiden Baldwin as the ball bounced into the pitch and onto the net for the tying goal at the death. Extra time came along, the Bournemouth defense kept on its toes and kept the record goal scorer in Macaulay Langstaff quiet throughout the afternoon but neither could break the deadlock. That was until the 120th minute, as a shot from Jody Jones just after entering the box found itself hitting the keeper's hands, but still going into the net. Notts County had come back from a 2-0 deficit, took the game into extra time, and punched their ticket to Wembley for the playoff finals for the first time in three years. Before the semi-final game, Aiden Baldwin and Jody Jones had last scored in 2017 and 2018 respectively. But now, these two men had helped push the Magpies one step closer to promotion. But the playoff final at Wembley wasn't going to be a walk in the park by any stretch. Chesterfield had finished third place in the standings, right behind Notts County, and their win over Bromley in the semi-final showed their own fortitude as they overcame a Bromley side that tied the game at the death themselves in regular time before Liam Mandeville scored the winner for Chesterfield. Second and third place in the National League, battling for the last promotion spot in one of the world's most famous stadiums. It's the kind of drama you just can't write. Five minutes later. Goalie Sam Slocum's attempt to make a save on Andrew Dallas results in the equivalent of a Liu Kang flying kick that gives Chesterfield a penalty, in which Andrew Dallas swiftly converts. And just like that, the Magpies are playing catch-up for the second straight game. Chesterfield's defense kept cool and collected throughout the course of the game, while Notts County, even with the majority of the possession, seemed to be more nervous as they couldn't find an equalizer through the first half. There seemed to be a wake-up call in the second half, though, as Notts County looked much more improved while pushing for the tying goal. But as the closing minutes of the game approached, it was looking more and more like Chesterfield were going to write yet another chapter in Notts County's history of playoff woes. But John Bostock had other ideas. Can they hit back here? Bostock swings it in! It's gone through! It's another late show from Notts County! They just never know when they're beaten! 
for the second straight week. It feels as if Notts County is about to go down for the three count, but they kick out at 2.999. Extra time is a little bit more spicy this time around, as Chesterfield yet again finds an early goal via an absolute beauty of a shot by Armando Dobra. A 2-1 lead has not plain catch up yet again, as Chesterfield's defense locks down on Langstaff, but in the second half of extra time, after a cross towards the net is punched out by Fitzsimmons, and it finds Rodriguez, whose shot then finds the pitch, bounces up from it and then over the goalie for the tying goal. Yet again, this team refuses to go gently into that good night, and their determination takes them all the way to penalty kicks. With a final substitution happening just before it as Archie Mayer, a loney from Norwich City who has represented Scotland at the U21 level, comes in due to his size and specialty at penalty kicks, having saved one earlier in the season against Altricum back in March. Ollie Banks and Macaulay Langstaff both respectively scored their initial kicks, but Luke Williams' decision to bring in Mare pays dividends as Darren Olicker's penalty attempt is saved. Uben Rodriguez gives Knotts the advantage, and they maintain it as the score is 3-2 for Knotts after conversions from Lawrence McGuire and Jody Jones. It is then that Archie Mare yet again comes clutch with a foot save on Jeff King's penalty that looks like something right out of Captain Tsubasa. It is then that John Bostock comes up to take his penalty kick. What the hell is that? For Chesterfield, it's a slim lifeline, but one that they will take, as Joe Quigley converts on his penalty, tying up the score 3-3. It is then that Kedwin Scott takes to the field, with promotion hopes all on his shoulders. It's not an unfamiliar position. After all, he was the man who took the penalty that could have tied things up at the race course all those months ago against Wrexham, in a match that turned out to be the National League title and automatic promotion decided. But this time around, he wasn't on enemy territory. As Kedwin Scott calmly made his run, sent the ball into the bottom right corner, and earned his redemption with the decisive penalty to send Notts County to the English Football League after their four-year stint in the National League. A team that refused to die and whose historic run in the National League provided some of the greatest drama that you will ever see in football. While they may have taken the long road to get here, this victory at Wembley has ensured that they won't just be a footnote in the history books. Notts County is undeniable in every aspect, and the people within this organization are those undeniable heroes that have made it all happen. But we can't talk about the season and the heroes who will live in Notts County lore for eternity without talking about Jason Turner. Jason's sudden and unexpected passing away on March 30th, 2023, brought the club, its community, in the footballing sphere in the National League. His work with the Knotts County Foundation was an integral part of community outreaches in recent years, and it can be said that without his relentless, yet calm and steady presence at the club since his appointment in 2016, that there may have not been a Knotts County as we know it today. Without a doubt, he was much loved by those within Knotts County as a man who would bend over backwards to aid anyone and everyone involved with the club. That love and admiration wasn't just something from those within the organization, as many across the National League and in the world of football reached out to extend their condolences to a man who was respected across football, having also worked in the EFL with teams such as Bath City, Newport County, Plymouth Argyle, and Cardiff City. A loss of this magnitude at any level is a mental shock, and there's no doubt that emotions were definitely running high, but for the Magpies, I do fully believe that the same relentless spirit of Jason that refused to give up on Knotts County at its most dire hour and his willingness to go the extra mile for those around them was embodied by Knotts County's players during this final stretch. He was an undeniable hero in every way, and even as someone whose only knowledge of him is through various articles and the words of supporters across the English football pyramid, I can say with confidence that he was taken from the world all too soon and that he will be very much missed. Football 
is a merciless sport. It can bring you up at one moment, and then swiftly right back down the next. If you take a closer look beyond the big money and the limelights of the game's elite teams, you'll find similar stories to that of Knox County. Teens with the longevity and heritage, but who have fallen into dire times. It's what makes a story like this one that Knott's County provided all that much more special. Whether it was the new ownership that stepped in to help steady the ship, the well-loved and respected CEO who bridged the gap between the old and new eras, the newly appointed manager with a chip on his shoulder, or the many players whose contributions from start to end of the season resulted in the Magpies finally getting over the hump. No matter what the future holds for this team moving into the English Football League again in League 2, or through any other seasons going forward, whether they go up, down, or stay at the same level, they've all put their names in the history books. Not just in Notts County's lore, but into football lore as a whole. They're responsible for arguably the most exciting championship race in any footballing competition worldwide across the season. But most importantly, to the community who has been with them through thick and thin over the last few years, they're one very important thing. They are undeniable heroes.